Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at some recent updates to the Insta360 Studio app for desktop, and I feel like some of these updates have flown under the radar, but they actually make the editing process a lot more fun, enjoyable, and less daunting, especially if you're somebody who edits a lot of 360 footage, or if you're like me, I love recording with my 360 camera, I just hate editing the footage because I find it to be, for lack of a better term, a pain in the ass to try and get a few of the clips that I really want to use into my final edit on my editor of choice. Now I'm not gonna do a deep dive tutorial or full on technical walkthrough, but what I am gonna cover is the quality of life improvements that are gonna help the day-to-day -day workflow. But what we are gonna cover is this new multi-clip workflow that allows you to create and reframe multiple clips from a single source file, and then you'll be able to use those across all of your different projects at any point in time into the future. This is big. We'll also cover the ability to switch between projects or start a new project without having to completely close the app down and then restart it, which has been a big complaint. How about batch exporting all of your clips on your project timeline into individual clips so that you have them for use in repurposing later on? This is huge. And a few honorable mentions like transitions, titles and music. So let's get right into it. As mentioned, I love recording with my 360 camera. I'm already 400 gigs deep and tons of different files that I've been recording throughout this year with the new X5. So as you open up the app, you should be on the newest one, which is going to be 5.88 and that came out in August time. You're going to notice this pop up right here like it normally does and it's going to allow you to create a new project or use any of your previous ones. So we'll just start a new project for right now and we'll call this test nine for funsies and you can select your ratio like usual and then this is going to open nice and easy. Now what you're going to notice that is different is right down here over the project timeline you can actually click this button and this will allow you to start a new project if you want which was huge because if you wanted to start a new project you had to close the app start it back up and come from that screen but this is powerful and this is amazing is if you want to jump in between any of your other projects that you've been editing, you can quickly select them right there. Now it doesn't give you a whole lot of uh, ability to read this. So if you don't like the way this is set up with these five, or you need to go back a little bit deeper, all you have to do is click on the show more button right here. And then now you can go through your entire library of 360 files you've been working on. Or once again, you can actually start a new project here right from scratch. Okay. So it's a small, quick, honorable mention, but why should I ever have to leave the app to start a new project or jump between them, right? So they finally got that fixed. Yay team. Now the next thing we want to look at is this whole media section up here. You're going to click on this and you can open some files. I always like dragging and dropping. So we're going to work with some of my uh, mountain biking footage. I'm just going to grab, I already did the first three. So I'm going to start fresh with four, five, and six, and we'll see what happens. I'm just going to drag these right over here and it's going to bring it in. Okay. If you ever want to change the view, you can click this right here. If you like looking at more of a thumbnail, I just like the title names. Okay. So for right now, it's me mountain biking. And this is a 54 second clip down here, as you can see. We can turn it around and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just riding down a trail or something like that. So when you click on this over here, you're going to have some different options on the right hand side, such as stabilization, um, lens guard type of stuff, media processing. If you want to do like color enhancement or whatever, you can click on these. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to go into a big deep dive, but what we want to get to is right down here, which is clip management. And this is where we're going to be able to create more clips in different ways, okay? So maybe clip number one, I just wanna keep it the original one. So I'm just gonna clip and click create a new clip now. And now we're on to this one, okay? So let's just reframe this. Let's see where we're at. I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe I'm just gonna, you know, zoom out just a little bit right here. And, you know, we can just pull the cursor along and see if there's anything exciting happening here. Ooh, here's me crossing a bridge, okay? So let's just use this as an example. Like I've got this. Okay, now if you like the shortcuts, and you could do this in nine by 16, 16 by nine, depends on what platform you're editing for. I'm just gonna keep it in a wide format here because it looks better in my opinion for right now. So I'm gonna use the shortcut I for in, and that's gonna shorten the clip here at the beginning at the playhead. And then if you want it to look a particular way, you can always you know hit this for keyframes. I always like K, K is for keyframe, right? And that's gonna set it so that the orientation looks like this. And if you wanna change any of these extra zooms that are preset, you could do that too. Okay, so for me, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to zoom out. I like the way this looks. I'm going to get hit play and see what happens here. And then it kind of comes around the corner. So I want to reframe it this way. So it continues pace facing forward. K again. And then we're just going to cross the bridge. See what happens here. Okay. 
Great, and then we're gonna call it a day. Okay, maybe I'll just change it one more time so it's facing forward and hit K. You can, O is for out. And now we have a seven second clip and we've just played that again. We'll take a look at this. That's great. Okay, that's kind of cool. And that is what clip number two is gonna be. You could rename it and let's just say maybe seven second bridge B-R-I-D-G-E crossing. Okay, cool. Now maybe I wanna come back up here to clip number one and I'm gonna make another clip off of that. Okay, so we have the whole file. Yeah, cool. So then now maybe this time, let's turn it around because we already crossed the bridge. Let's see if there's anything else exciting happening here. Um, you know, like we're not going to overcomplicate this, okay? So we're just going to go here and maybe we'll start with this frame. I'm going to hit I for N, K to mark this orientation. Yes, and we're going to go a few different seconds, one, two, three. Then I'm going to zoom out a little bit wider so we get that kind of like perspective like you're right there and hit K to mark that. Yes, and it's going to zoom out. We'll go one, two, three. Yes, we'll hit K again, um, and then we'll zoom in after a couple seconds. Hit K again, we'll zoom in a little bit tighter, and maybe up and forward. Yes, there we go. And then we'll call this a day right here. And then we'll hit O for out, and now I have another nine second clip, and let's just play that back from the beginning. See, it starts to pull back here and then it punches back in really quick. Okay, so you get the idea of what's going on here, and we'll just rename this for fun, nine second riding trail, okay? Um, and let me see if up here I have anything more exciting within this one, double tap it to load it up. Let's see what's happening here. And then I'm just gonna scrub through this really quick, right? Like I said, I'm not gonna do a super detailed, ooh, it's me playing with my phone, cool. Um, here we go, we're going down a little bit of a windy trail, you know, like whatever, okay? So maybe I wanna save this clip right here. Once again, it's gonna be N, K. And then I've got some stuff and we're gonna go over this little bridge right here. Right, and then now we've got that good and we're just gonna hit out and then that would be clip number one basically. Um, and if I wanted to create a clip off of that, it's gonna start over once again, okay? So now if we come over here to the project, yes, and we click on the number four actually is the one. You can see that over here on the right hand side, now we have these different clips, right? Seven second bridge crossing, nine second writing trail. So I can just take that and hit the add button. Okay, the first one shows up at seven seconds, right? I click on it once again. I come over here, I like my nine second clip. Boom, I'm gonna add that to the timeline. And now we've got these three right here. And then uh, this one, we just made a quick little clip right here as we saw for number one. And we're gonna add that to the end over here as well. Okay, and we will hit this. Let's see if that's the right one. And we can zoom in. Yeah, so we've got three clips under 25 seconds and it's got all of the framing just like we did. Now, if we wanna come back later and add in speed ramps and you know speed things up, you could do that too, but that's really convenient. And what's nice about this is this ends up on the project media. And on top of that, at a later point in time, if you end up closing this project down, and you drag the files back in, right? It's actually gonna show those clips. So let me show that to you now. Okay, so we have this one, it's test. Okay, we're gonna start a new project. And actually I'm gonna close the app completely because I want you to see that it's like totally gone and wiped because it was in a temporary file. Okay, so I'm gonna reopen Insta360. Give it just a second here, it's pretty quick. We're gonna start a new project. We'll call this one test 10. Okay. We're gonna open, okay? So I haven't dragged anything in here, okay? I don't have anything in the media. I have the project file, okay? So if I wanted to, if I just wanted to drag one of those files, like six and seven or four or five actually, here, boom, and I drag these in here, you'll notice that when I click on these that it's got two clips for this one and it's got the three clips total that we've made from that first original file. So it's associated in some metadata later on so that you can always recall it, which is really cool. On top of that, let's go back, and I wanna show you this, which is a nice feature number two, is the ability to export all of those files or those clips on your timeline independently, okay? So if we go back to this project here, which we were already working on, when you go to export, which is really cool, you can come up here and it's gonna ask you, do you wanna export a single clip as in a final edited video with all of the stuff, 
or you can click on multiple clips and we're just going to do them in 1980 but usually i'll export in 4k of course but we're just going to do it really fast and we're not going to change the bit rate but normally i make that 100 bits per second in 4k and we're going to export this and I'm gonna come back in just one second. One hour later. All right, so now that that's done, we can take a look at our exports. So here's the folder that was created. You can see we got three clips here, which are the same three clips that we have on our timeline. And then if we open them up, we can take a look at that. You can play them back and it's basically everything that we just reframed. But instead of it being one single video, we've got our three individual clips that are exported. Really powerful, super beneficial because if I make an edit, I like these clips. Maybe I wanna reuse them at a later point in time and I don't have to take the full video file and chop it up. It just saves you that extra step, especially if you're just pushing out a bunch of B-roll and things of that nature. This is really, really, really beneficial, big time saver. One of the things that I also didn't mention, or I forgot to add to the honorable mentions, which we're gonna to get to in just a second, is that part of the updates and a recent update is that you can actually play any of these files right off of the computer in a quick preview mode without having to load them into Insta360 to view them first. So that's always a nice touch. So here's one of me, you know, out riding the electric skateboard or something, or what happened here? Let's go to a different file where I'm actually in motion. Yeah, but look, you can play back a file of you doing whatever it is you're doing, but then you can also reframe it just so you can get an idea of like, do I like what I'm looking at here? Is any of this going to be beneficial? Like, how is this going to work for me without having to directly open up the app? Now, before we get to wrapping up, there are a few additional honorable mentions here within the updates recently. So they have added music and a music library where you can go through all of this different stuff and figure out if there's something in here that's royalty free that you like and want to use with your edits. We've also got text. So this is kind of nice right here. They got some really fun text and overlays. Uh, it's kind of cap cutty in nature. So that's just a nice little touch uh, where, without you having to leave the app itself. Uh, transitions, this isn't new, new, but I feel like like they're always expanding the different library and you can get a preview. And these I like because they play really well with 360 footage. It gives it that Insta360 look and feel. And sometimes you can find these in your regular desktop editing app like CapCut or Final Cut Pro, but it's nice just to have these here. One of the last things that I really like with the media, and I don't know if this is a new feature or if it's been around a long time, but it's something I recognize is the ability to drop in non-360 files. So if I take something right here, which is just an edit, but it's just any standard MP4 that I can throw that on the timeline and put it in with the rest of my edits here. So if I have footage from a different camera, like a Osmo Pocket 3 or something or other, it's got that ability to do all of your editing from various input sources on one single timeline. So there you have it, and hopefully that helps. Nothing groundbreaking per se, but there are some nice upgrades and some honorable mentions in there. I am quite happy and impressed, not only with the multi-clip ability to slap out a bunch of different clips from a single source file, but the ability to export multiple clips or all of the clips on my timeline independently, right there, that's great. Also that ability to jump between different projects and start new projects without having to close it down. These are some nice bits and pieces in here. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to drop that down below. If you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and I'll see you all in another video.